Hey guys, today's story is about a diaper fetishist in D&D. And with this being said, I'm not quite sure if a content warning is applicable here, but it gets a little disgusting later. So, our friend and DM set up a text-based 5e campaign for us on Discord, and we were playing a homebrew campaign with a serious and gritty tone with all of us creating our characters accordingly, all except for one. The party consisted of the DM, Ezra, who is myself playing a High Elf Trickster Cleric, Tom playing a High Elf Death Cleric, Blaze, who was a Tiefling Wizard, Jenny, who was a Dragonborn Druid, Limmy, who was a Servitor Druid slash Ranger, Drew, who was a orc barbarian, Zack, who played a human sorcerer, Weaver, playing a warforged barbarian, and then finally, Carl, who was playing a tiefling bard, and is the problem in the story. And I want to preface this with the fact that we were all adults. We had been friends, or at least friendly with each other for years, and we're all kink positive. No one rightly cares what you like. We don't shame people. The problem came along, however, when Carl started to play. For, you see, Carl's kink is being a baby. He's balls deep into this fantasy. Diapers, baby powder, bottles, pacifiers, breastfeeding, you name it, he's there. We all know this by virtue of knowing Carl for a few years. Weirdly, he treats his kink like a huge, shameful secret that would ruin his life if it got out. But he has no problems with making references to it and play-acting it all the time. But regardless, this wasn't a problem for any of us until he tried to get us to participate in it without our consent. Well, Carl rolled up the most aggressively naive, lawful stupid, I'm bubbly, character that he could possibly muster. His character looked like a tiefling who hailed from the realm of Candyland. Picture Strawberry Shortcake with horns, standing next to a bunch of hard index cons, and you have our party. Everyone, including the DM, was trying their best to make this work because we are all friends and we just wanted to play some D&D. And then enter the kink roleplay. In Carl's very first post as his character, he rolled up to the barmaid at the starting tavern and asked her for some milk, saying that he just finished drinking his bottle on the way into town. What the fuck, man? Cue a collective what the hell from the rest of us. But we did try our best to RP around him. His character was the most bubbly, squeaky, giggly, aggressively positive person in all of the Forgotten Realms. He invaded my character's personal space on multiple occasions, and effectively forced her into the corner of any room that they were in because she was so preoccupied trying to get away from him. My character carried a deck of marked cards and used them to make money. She played a few hands with the members of the party, won some gold, and made a few friends. Carl got jealous as no one was interacting with his posts, because they made everyone uncomfortable. He thought that if he acted like my character, he might get some interaction. So he demanded that the DM give his character a deck of cards too. Alright, so on one hand, I think this guy is rolling that one on his uh, self-awareness check. But with that also being said, the party probably should have said something to this guy like, Hey, could you not? None of us like this. Like really. As far as I can tell, nobody really mentioned to him at this point in time, like, could you just not have your fetishes here, please? Maybe I'm just, I don't know, jumping the gun or something, but it seems like it's a rather common occurrence in a lot of these stories, where nobody really just says, hey, could you not? Can we, can we talk about this? And it's not even really necessarily them kink-shaming if they just request that it's not there. You know, not everyone's into the same stuff. However, the DM, who is a nice person, and tried to keep everyone happy and invested into the campaign, acquiesced. 
So Carl popped back into RP with a clumsy deck of cards that he had apparently made with paper and crayons and tried to make the party play go fish with him. This was met with about as much enthusiasm as you would expect. So we pushed forward and met our benefactor, and enjoyed some good RP and character development over dinner, and then a soak in an elaborate bathhouse which was notably improved by virtue of Carl saying that his character was too baby to take a bath with everyone, and exited RP immediately. Afterwards, we went back to the tavern, shopped around for some supplies, and started to make plans to retrieve the MacGuffin that we were hired to steal. We were trying to keep things serious, going over the map and determining marching order for our journey to the next town. But in the middle of this, Carl returned from the market, hauling literally 60 cream pies, which he pretended out of character that the joke flew over his head. And he had bought these from a crass halfling baker and about 40 pounds of assorted fruit that everyone told him not to buy. He then pulled out a kazoo and started loudly playing. Okay. So, again, at this point, why has nobody talked to him? Because just reading about this is making me annoyed. <laughs> this guy is playing an incredibly obnoxious character. Why are you just going to hold your tongue and not just at least attempt to ask him to please tone it down at least? Around this time, Weaver left the party with her reason given being time crunch. But it was really because Carl was making her so uncomfortable. We were all very saddened by the loss because Weaver was a great character that we really enjoyed RPing with. Okay, so again, now you're actually losing people at this point. Why did you not talk to Carl? This is the point where I threw up my hands, muted the chat, and walked away. I had been trying very hard not to ruin anyone else's good time. But Carl was being so aggressively stupid and infantile, it was ruining the entire campaign. Okay, so again, if one person is hampering the amount of fun that numerous others are having, then it's not you being the jerk asking the one person who is being a problem to tone it down, even in the slightest. Especially considering that, compared to the rest of the party, he is very much the black sheep. You have a very serious campaign, at least in your own words, with a person who wants to RP a child. It, it doesn't take a genius to figure out that that's not going to mesh well. And there was no good way for us to RP with him in character, because if any of our characters met him on the street, they would have to be more than likely to rob him and leave him for dead. He added nothing to the story, and didn't seem interested in anything besides playing pretend baby. Exactly. He's dead weight. So why were you guys just letting him do this when all of you wanted to play D&D, and he just wanted to do... my little fetish adventure? The DM got fed up and approached Carl privately, asking him to tone down the baby shtick and try to work with the tone of the campaign just a little. She wasn't even asking for big changes, just some minor tweaks to keep things running smoothly and preserve the rest of the party's comfort. Carl didn't like that. Carl freaked out and refused to change anything, saying, This is who I really am inside. You can't ask me to change myself. Well, it's about time someone actually talked to Carl in this story. But, with that also being said, I'm going to go off on a limb here and say drop him like a sack of rocks at this point. This guy is a literal man-child. But, the DM said okay, if you don't want to change your character, how about I help you make a new one? But, Carl didn't like that either. He rejected every suggestion or offer of help and finally decided to pull his character out of the campaign. And when he made that decision, he also demanded that his character would be removed from the campaign by having the other players trick him into going to the market and then stealing his stuff and leaving the town without him. All of us were uncomfortable with that, and we told him so. 
and the DM just very smoothly put Carl on a bus in a much nicer way than he deserved, and we continued to play. This entire debacle prompted some of us to go back through our private message history with Carl, and we started comparing notes and discovered that he had been talking crap about almost all of us behind our backs for years. When one of us was succeeding without his help, he hated it because he wanted to be depended on. Hindsight is 2020, and on the reread, the manipulation and gaslighting really started to jump off the page. I went back about three years in my message history and found a long-forgotten conversation of Carl telling me that he was in love with the DM and wanted to serve her like a loyal knight, which opened up a whole nother can of worms. Oh boy. We compared notes even further and discovered some nastier stuff. Carl had been RPing his kink with almost everyone in our other Discord servers without their knowledge or consent, including minors. I'm a nurse in real life and work with medically fragile infants, and Carl would regularly ask me about work in a way that was plausibly friendly, but looking back on it, it became painfully apparent that he just wanted to hear about baby stuff to feed his kink. I was and am disgusted by this, and there's even more, but it's not worth going into here. You get the gist. At this point in time, we all decided that we had had enough. Carl, who had stayed in the game server as a spectator, got kicked. We cut ties with him, and we kicked and banned him from the rest of our Discord servers. He changed his status to, I still love you, but... He thankfully never made a stink about it publicly. We ended up going back through the campaign as a group and editing our posts to remove all reference to Carl and his character. The story is flowing nicely now with a party who are actually invested in the setting and plot, and we're having a great time. Unfortunately, to this day, I don't think Carl understands what he did wrong. Alright, well, what about Weaver? Did you tell her that you got rid of Carl? They might come back now that that creep is gone. And I'm going to call him a creep because, dear God, it's it's been a while since a horror story has actually made me feel disgusted. So yeah, as I've been saying throughout most of the story, they should have talked to him sooner because if him freaking out when the DM finally did confront him is anything to go off of, then it probably would have been the same effect, just a lot faster and they could have gotten rid of him all that much sooner. I can understand not wanting to be mean to your friends, but I would be loath to call Carl a friend. There's a lot to unpack with the implications of Carl talking to minors with his fetish in tow and asking a nurse about infants again with his fetish in mind. This guy is truly disgusting. But I wash my hands of the story, it's over, and hopefully none of you ever get a Carl in your games. I know I don't. So yeah, that's the end, and as always, stay safe, stay sane, and have a good one.